Hello, everyone. So, 5 p.m. Hey. straight. Hello, Nikolai. Hi, Nikolai. <laughs> so nice to see you after I so am long. Happy to see you. Hello, Rene. Hello, Tomoko. <laughs> Hello, Rene. Um, Hello. Oh, George. Hello. Oh, Hello. Hello. Good, Good, morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. For a start, may I ask you to please, if if it is okay with you, it is always much better when we all have our videos on, so the speaker and the audience um, sees uh, to whom they're talking to, with whom we are doing the discussion. So it is much, uh, much better feeling. So if you have, if you do not have anything strictly against being seen, I would really like to ask you to please turn on your videos. Let's see each other. It is very, very nice to see so many of you today. And today is our first webinar in 2024. So let's say happy new beginning from this year with Akukozomics webinar. And today we have really a special pleasure and an honor to start this webinar series of this year with one of the greatest scientists uh, of today in the fields of water science, ionizing um, radiation science and electromagnetic safety, Professor Livio Giuliani from Italy. Uh, so I think you read the announcement. I think most of you actually, I saw based on the interest of people who signed up, you are all, most of you are already familiar with uh, Professor Giuliani's work. But for some of you who may not uh, paid closer attention to announcement, I would like to especially emphasize uh, that um, the work of Professor Giuliani is not something that only resulted, let's say, in um, publications, uh, but in the change of regulations of some countries, especially when it comes to electromagnetic safety. So his research work really has impact on the way people live. And it is especially, especially important because um, you know, with um, uh, with electromagnetic radiation, uh, this is something that uh, we as people do not feel. We do not. We're not aware. We, as a scientist, we do not have yet perfect tools to really measure the impact. So his work in this area is really pioneering, and uh, owing to his research, compared to many of us, he is like um, maybe 20, 50 years ahead. So he sees more and, and, and I am happy that today we have this chance uh, to listen to him and to see with him what he currently sees. Uh, so today we will have first uh, around 30 to 40 minutes of Professor Giuliani's lecture. The lecture as always will be recorded and afterwards will be available on YouTube. And Professor Giuliani also uh, agreed to share. So when we share afterwards the link for YouTube video, you will also have a PDF of his presentations of, of today. So without further um, ado, if Professor Zenko would like to comment something to welcome our speaker, please. And then we can begin. Thank you, Yelena. I can start introducing my presentation. I guess. Uh, coherence in water is a neg negentropic engine. Uh, one of the paradoxes attributed to Ilya Prigogine can be formulated as a question. Why chemical reactions in living organisms require less energy than in industrial reactors? Or else? Who provides missing energy to living system for their own chemical reaction? A early answer came in 1888, uh, thanks to Italian theoretical physicists, one uh, the Giudice Preparata and Vitiello, who compared the water to a free electron dipole laser, stating that the liquid water is a biphasic liquid. 
um, that has uh, molecules at the two different levels of energy. This theory for the developed in 1995, Preparata published quantum electrodynamics uh, coherence in matter, providing a full theory quantum molecular physics of uh, liquid water. It is a biphasic liquid, and one of the two phases is a coherent phase, which a coherent cluster of water molecules are dynamically defined. Um, coherent cluster of water are dynamically defined, since they are arising and dissolving, forming a phase which compenetrates the opposite in co incoherent phase made of natural neutral molecules or hydrate ions, each one moving in a disordered way. 20 years later, from uh, the, the paper of uh, 1988, the theoretical prediction uh, Clusters of water molecules were observed by Wang uh, at the light of a synchrotron and confirmed independently five years later by Taskin, Torre, and other physicists of the Florence University. Coherence, it is the difference between the laser and the LED light. Coherence was discovered in Hertzian wave by Kastler in 1950, who proposed the, la the laser as an optical pump, earning the Nobel Prize in 1966. In 1962, Landau earned the, his Nobel Prize with the discovery of coherence in the superfluid state of helium-4. It is at uh, temperature temperature lower than three uh, Kelvin degrees. In 1988, the Giudice Preparata Vidiello theorized the similarity of water and free electron lasers, which implied the existence of coherence in water at the lab pressure and the temperature. Water at room temperature and pressure can be considered as a dynamic equilibrium between water single molecules and water clusters organized as a mesoscopic aggregates. Cluster molecules are tuned in phase. EDMS clusters are coherent. Antonella De Ninno and uh, Agostina Congiu Castellano in 2010 show, show the method to measure the coherence on the hypothesis that uh, the coherent phase is, uh, uh, is the less energetic one is the more energetic one, excuse me. You have here a, a deconvolution of the peak of uh, water in the infrared spectrum at uh, 3,000, uh, 300 uh, centimeters to minus, minus one. And uh, you can uh, see that the convolution uh, provides uh, three cubes uh, that that uh, are the curve of uh, the fraction of water, incoherent fraction of water on the right, on the left, the uh, short, short. Uh, curve of a coherent water, and uh, in the middle, the curve of mixed uh, phase. Uh, 
because uh, I said coherent domains are uh, coherent clusters are dissolving and uh, arising uh, continuously. So a, we could consider the existence of a third phase, that is the phase of the uh, dissolving or arising clusters. And this is the higher peak. But only with the, the novikov jadin experiment, and the we could understand how water is storing energy and information. We discovered that the existence of a mixed water coherent domains, clusters made of water molecules and ions um, in the picture colored balls are cations where water molecules are white underlined and they can be distinguished as well as in the surface of a sphere. We replicated the Jardin experiment at the CNR facility. CNR is the acronym of Counts, National Council of Research, Italian National Council of Research, Tor Vergata, Rome, on the ion cyclotron resonance of glutamic acid in the years between 2004 and 2015. Um, we had uh, a facility then where we could uh, show uh, the effect, the Jardin effect, uh, that was considered an effect, uh, a randomic effect, uh, until 2006. But our setup was able to reproduce the effect uh, every, every time. Um, I remember that uh, when Nikolai Blom came in Rome, I, I showed the effect in Tor Vergata and uh, we get the effect immediately. Uh, the, we have here the screens, uh, upper the signal uh, before the experiment. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have only the background uh, signals of the background. Noise without signals. Uh, here we have the signal when we switch on the uh, uh, alternate current uh, magnetic field parallel to the uh, static magnetic field that we provided in the hypomagnetic room of CNR, avoiding the errors, the mistakes due to uh, variability of the geomagnetic field, we uh, could uh, know exactly the intensity of the static magnetic field, and we were able to uh, compute the exact um, alternate uh, alternate uh, magnetic field frequency that is proportional to the intensity of the static magnetic field. So we got this uh, uh, beta curve huh? that is a sign of resonance because is the curve related to the beta coefficient of the harmonic oscillator in, in the differential equation of the uh, harmonic oscillator. And we got this uh, peak when we uh, switch on the uh, the alternate magnetic field. Um, obviously, 
uh, to be more sure to get the the curve we uh, set up around the uh, the frequency around in a, in a range in an interval around the required peak and then we move slowly the the bottom of uh, uh, of the frequency to reach to fine tuning to find uh, in order to to get the fine tuning of the uh, resonance between the uh, alternate magnetic field and the static magnetic field at the uh, intensity of the static magnetic field provided we can observe that we have uh, a frequency of uh, here, a frequency of almost 5 hertz um, uh, the amplitude in nano in nano ampere is uh, excuse me uh, is uh, 14 14 uh, nano ampere that is the double about of the background intensity about 20 13 nanoampere so we have a peak that cannot be explained with the uh, the signal the intensity the energy of the signal we provided to get it a, an american uh, scientist physicist of the yale university robert adair uh, criticized the experiment of uh, Novikov and Jadin, uh, uh, saying that it was impossible that uh, a signal so weak uh, could generate that peak uh, because uh, uh, the, if uh, a current of ions uh, arises under the stimulation of the peak, it is due to the Lorentz force of the magnetic applied magnetic field, but uh, this Lorentz force is uh, ten to minus seven times the Brownian force uh, that is uh, moving, pushing the molecules in the sample. So, uh, according to his uh, uh, thinking it is impossible that uh, this uh, event can happen can happen. but uh, uh, this uh, event happens uh, and we can uh, say that uh, the it is a many a, a proof of a, a more complex uh, system of uh, events that we uh, call with the name of a Libov Zadin effect. Uh, this is the second half of the experiment because the first half of the effect is uh, the one related to two ions. This uh, second uh, part of the effect is uh, due to the novikov jadin experiment uh, shows that also uh, Zwitter ions are involved. Zwitter ions are neutral molecules that uh, are polarized, uh, that are, are an electric dipole. Um, this experiment was uh, uh, replicated many times in Europe uh, we uh, in Italy we replicated it at Frascati the, in Enea with uh, in the lab of Antonella de Nino in 2002 in Munchen Pazur Alexander Pazur 
replicated experiment 2004 in Legnaro, Padova, at the Institute of Nuclear Physics, uh, Italian National Institute of Nuclear Physics in 2006, in Turin at the Polytechnical Universities in 2008, and in uh, Rome in 2008. The dates are related to the paper that was published, but obviously, uh, in Rome, we got this experiment uh, uh, in 2005-2006, really. Uh, also in Denmark, the, it is a funny photo. Uh, I am with uh, Nikolai, and this is the facility of the space department of the uh, DTU. And uh, we got uh, the uh, effect also here. Um, even if uh, we had uh, a, an electrolytic cell with uh, uh, platinum electrodes, that is not a good uh, way to get the, the effect. Uh, uh, we have to use uh, gold electrodes, really. And it is a spectacular uh, um, uh, curve of the uh, Libov effect. We use uh, the uh, calcium chloride, uh, and so uh, we get this uh, uh, peak at the expected uh, frequency of the 15 hertz. It is very a peak, very well formed, really. Or now, the Lipov effect, the Novikov Jadin effect, are the former proofs of the existence of a pure and a mixed coherent domains in water. Mixed coherent domains are the very important uh, achievement we got in this uh, topic. Indeed, the better damping shape of the peak shows that it is a resonant peak. The observed peak of current overcomes the threshold, the KT threshold, without external source of energy. Energy being provided by CDS, coherent domains, Um, only molecules coming from uh, coherent domains and near the electrodes concur, forming the peak of ion current. It, it was uh, demonstrated in 2006 at the Legnaro lab of uh, National Institute of Nuclear Physics in Padua. Um, paper shows only CDs near surface are stable. That is why someone later discovered that the so-called exclusions on water. That uh, would be uh, named the inclusions of really. Four, fourth, previously coherent domains capture ions or sweeter ions from, from bulk of water. Then they form the ion currents detected in the libov zalin effect. It is surprising because sweeter ions are neutral molecules. They cannot, could not be accelerated toward an electrode. But this is the proof that uh, an ionization happens within the uh, within the solved uh, molecules 
that are sweeter ions, when we apply the ion frequency uh, resonance. Moreover, sweeter ions as a glutamic acid in uh, acid aqueous solutions, pH 2.9, and uh, the glutamic acid to be to to become ionized uh, require a pH lower than two. These sweeter ions are ionized by a very quick alternate magnetic field between twenty up to eighty nanotesla as it was detected uh, by means of uh, uh, the ionization, was also detected by means of FTR, ATR by the Nino e Conju in 2010. We uh, here uh, recall Libov upper, Abram Libov, that was one of the pioneers of this effect, and Martin Fleischmann, who the, the, the famous uh, Britain chemist, who uh, published with the, the Judice and uh, Talpo and Preparata, the paper in 2002, which related um, the Jardin effect to the theory of coherence in water. Mikhail Jardin and uh, Vadim Novikov, they, uh, who discovered, the, who performed, early performed the uh, Novikov Jardin experiment. They provided the proof of the existence of mixed water coherent domains that was theorized by other, by Preparata too. A mixed water coherent domains are made by molecules and ions coming from one or more or many chemical species solved in aqueous solution. Uh, this point was focused in a paper of uh, Jardin and me in 2006, uh, published on the Libov uh, magazine. Uh, resuming, the Libov effect shows that ions are forming current under a couple of the CSC magnetic fields tuned according to the ion cyclotron resonance. This uh, fact was uh, refused for many years in the United States due to the criticism of Adair, Robert Adair. Um, we, Carl Blackman, one of the pioneers of these uh, researches, he published in 1979 the proof that uh, uh, ELF are inducing uh, uh, efflux of uh, calcium ions from cells in the brains of uh, chickens and um, uh, was um, was obliged to 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 hidden the result this result he was uh, uh, it was forbidden to him to use the look the worse ion cyclotron resonance so he is uh, he with the blanchard published in 1985 a paper where the ion cyclotron resonance was uh, named ion parameter resonance they say that there is a mathematical model that fit fits the results of these uh, kind of experiments. Uh, the mathematical model says that the experiment uh, is uh, happens when uh, you uh, tune 
uh, the static magnetic field with the alternate current magnetic field, we, uh, according to a parameter, parametric resonance, ion parametric resonance, because he could not use the real uh, name, ion cyclotron resonance. When, but, well, the uh, Novikov-Jadin effect shows that also Zwitter ions are able to form a current, and it implies their own previous ionization. It is an ionization not only caused by, uh, by electromagnetic fields, uh, so-called non-ionizing uh, electromagnetic fields, but with uh, uh, an intensity and uh, a frequency very, very uh, in, in intensity, very weak, and a frequency very, very low. Ionization occurs on the boundary of uh, coherent domains, where are uh, placed the captured ions, according to the argument early provided in the recalled paper you know, of uh, uh, Jadin me and to the mechanism better descri described uh, in the continuation. Eh. We have uh, a mixed uh, coherent domain. Uh, the hydrogen bond suggests the tetrahedral geometry in the growing of the coherent domain. Uh, we have in green the um, in gray the water molecules and the in green other molecules already captured in the bounder in the boundary of the water coin domains. Why there is a classical or semi-classical mechanism to describe the capture. We have a strong um, gradient of the uh, potential magnetic uh, vector A, the vector uh, whose uh, rotation is uh, the magnetic induction B. Because uh, in the inner of the coherent domains, there is a, an electromagnetic field, the electromagnetic field that generates uh, when the heat appears in the in a condensed matter, generates the coherence, the cluster of molecules. Um, I remember that I described this mechanism of, uh, of BERT, of the coherent domains in a previous uh, aquaphotomics meeting. Outside of the coherent domain, there is nothing potential vector, magnetic vector A. So the gradient is very high. There is a force, the ponderomotive force, that is proportional to the gradient of the square of the potential vector A. And it is also proportional to the charge, electric charge, and in, uh, divided uh, um, two times the mass. That is the ponderomotive force. It is attracting. So an external molecule is attracted by coherent domains. When a coherent domain arises in water, it is able to attract molecules around it, but not all molecules because the, the last mile of the attraction is due to the resonance, transmissibility. And the resonance 
is uh, highest when the, there is uh, a difference between uh, uh, the pulsation of the molecules attracted and uh, the pulsation of uh, the attractive molecules. So, maximum curve of uh, transmissibility of the uh, impulse of uh, the uh, resonance, uh, we got the maximum when uh, that is corresponding to the fraction, to the inverse of the square root of uh, one minus the ratio between the two frequencies elevated to uh, to four to, to to two. So when the, the pulsation of the attracted molecules and the pulsation of the attractive uh, system are the same, we have the delta peak of the Dirac uh, frequency. So, coherent domains are attractive only with, uh, in the, only uh, for uh, molecules that has the same or almost the same frequency of a, a peak of the spectrum, infrared spectrum of water. Not all the molecules can be attracted by coherent domains. Other molecules are refused. It is, it is the phenomenon that also, uh, that is described as exclusion zone. The superficial, superficial water that is uh, close to a surface, um, as a, a density, high density of uh, coherent domains, because uh, uh, when a coherent domain became uh, ionized, also with uh, a, a small ionization, because uh, uh, only few molecules of millions of molecules forming the coherent domains. Uh, are ionized, uh, it is, uh, it remains closer to the surface from uh, which it uh, has, it, go, it uh, gets a, the, a, a supplement of energy and uh, is forming, and the coherent domains are forming the so-called exclusion zone. Apparently, no other molecules than water can enter in that zone, but it is not really. Many uh, chemical species are able to enter, and they are the species that have a natural frequency and uh, that is uh, uh, almost equal to the frequency of the uh, attractive system of uh, water, the frequency of water, in a, one word. We can uh, distinguish uh, hydrophobic, but also hydrophile, hydrophile uh, molecules that uh, are not uh, uh, satisfying uh, the, this condition the, uh, that produces the Dirac uh, peak, all the, these, the, the molecules that are satisfying this condition are able to penetrate the exclusion zone better. They are captured by coherent domains. 
So the attraction is due to a well-known strength in classical electromagnetism. CDA uh, coherent domains are structures with minimum energy and entropy since their molecules are tuned in phase. They cannot be penetrated by molecules not in phase. So uh, you uh, require not only the same uh, frequency, but also the same phase for molecules that are attracted by the system. The impulse of the, the late mile, the last mile, is provided by the transmissibility depending on resonance, that, according to this uh, formula. So, uh, the uh, chemical species able to provocate a resonance are the uh, molecular spaces that have large peaks of absorption peak peaks due to electronic oscillation or to phononic phonon oscillation. In water, this is the spectra between uh, almost zero and 3,500 um, centimeter to minus one. Water has a very high and very large uh, peaks, two main peaks, the one for electronic oscillation, about to 1,600 centimeters to minus one, and the one uh, about 300, 3,000 centimeters to minus one, due to the phonon oscillation. I compare these peaks with the peaks of deuterium of the heavy water, that is deuterium instead of hydrogen. So we can see that there is a shift of frequency of the peaks and also that the peak of deuterium signed with D are lower, many, much lower, almost the half of the peak of water. And uh, these peaks obviously are lowest when uh, you increase the temperature because uh, uh, gas vapor has no possibility to induce a resonance. For an example, we have here a chemical species that is not able to penetrate the inclusion zone, the zone where coherent domains are able to capture the molecules. It is uh, uh, infrared, um, infrared spectrum of uh, uh, aurum, uh, no, of uh, oxide of titanium. As you can see, there is no peak between 1,000 and 3,000 um, centimeter to minus one. Uh, there is only peak uh, in the range of a spectrum with frequencies lower than 1000 centimeter to minus one. So there is no vicinity, no vicinity of the spectrum of a titanium chloride, no dioxide with the spectrum of water.
and water is not able to attract molecules of titanium dioxide because uh, it is impossible the the last mile of the of the motion because the um, there is no transmissibility of the impulse for uh, for due to um, resonance so the condition that we need the constraint to to get a, a molecule able to penetrate the coherent domains or to call to to enter in the boundary of the coherent domain is that the frequency of the mole and the frequency of the water, the square, is lower than one. In the case, because the transmissibility is proportional to the inverse of the square, in the case, the transmissibility becomes highest. That is, that the frequency of the molecule that has to be captured has to be very close, almost the same of the water. But after the capture, the frequency becomes, be, uh, becomes, excuse me, becomes the same, identical. You remember the experiment of uh, of a metronomes under a table that is oscillating because uh, under there is there are rolls that uh, you can uh, put the metronomes in any frequency very slow very very fast. Uh, and if you have a three metronomes with different uh, velocity, with different speed of the oscillation, after some second, these metronomes becomes tuned. It is the same phenomenon that occurs in the case of uh, molecules that are captured. Because the coherent domains are made by more than 5 million of uh, molecules, and the single molecules captured is uh, one molecule, the coherent domain adapt, adapts uh, is uh, uh, frequency uh, with a very small changement, while the captured molecules uh, has to change uh, its frequency of oscillation uh, over a more considerable uh, value. It is the reason for which the captured the molecules in coherent that are in coherent domains are chemically indistinguishable because they have the same oscillation of the water molecules that are in the domain. We what happens when a coherent domain captures external molecules? Order increasing order increases. Hey, we can see, look at the diagram of phases. We have here on the left, all the, the, many, the many molecules that are in a coherent domain. And on the right, one molecule of the bulk, that is an external molecule, not water molecule, or also water molecule. It is not important from this point of view. In the phase uh, uh, diagram, the molecules of the coherent domain have the same 
momentum. They have only a, a light uh, difference of a position. While the external molecule has different momentum and different position. After the capture, the momentum becomes the same and the position is uh, almost the, the same of the other uh, molecules in the coherent domains. We get the uh, diagram, phase diagram on the right. All molecules have the same phase, uh, the same phase of uh, the same momentum and they have only different uh, placements, positions. So we can say that uh, the capture of molecule, molecule by a coherent domain induces a more ordered stage. The system loses one degree of freedom. He reduces over infinite the number of possible bacterial stages of the system because uh, this, uh, this molecule could have any possible momentum. How many? infinite to one possible momentum. Oh, um, I provide two exercises, uh, two simple models to get a semi-quantitative estimation, non quantitative estimation, behavior of entropy during a, a novico vivadine experiment. Uh, we can use uh, the model of crystals where a, a chemical species of the crystal, the species A, is uh, substituted by other atoms of, of other two spaces. As it is well known, the set of a configuration, gamma, uh, is calculated uh, according to this uh, uh, formula. Moreover, we could introduce uh, the hypothesis that uh, uh, in the case of uh, maximum density of water, uh, The number of water molecules is almost equal to the number of bulk water. It is, uh, um, if you remember the previous uh, echo this uh, when uh, you uh, consider this uh, slope uh, this uh, curve uh, we have to consider that uh, there is uh, a line middle line that is able to di divide the the um, fraction of uh, uh, coherent water from the incoherent. It is uh, here about uh, 300 and uh, uh, 3,000 and 200 uh, centimeter to minus one. When you do the computing, the compu uh, when you compute the quantity in uh, a water sample, 
if the water is a millipore water, B or 3D distilled water, you get almost the same quantity of a coherent fraction from the incoherent fraction. Obviously, the middle, uh, the middle curve of a coherent uh, of um, due to uh, coherent domains that are dissolving and coherent domains that are increasing, that are burning, has to uh, be considered as a part of the coherent fraction and a part of the incoherent one. We got that uh, almost the 50% of uh, millipore water uh, enters this uh, fraction, coherent fraction. So we can uh, we can consider to to get a simple order. The two fractions uh, made have the same number of uh, molecules. In the case, we can uh, develop uh, the, the computation and uh, we can uh, see that uh, the stage of uh, water before uh, the capture can be computed the the entropy can be computed in this way and we get that the entropy is uh, proportional to uh, kappa for the k is uh, the constant of Boltzmann to the proportion is the, the is actually is equal to K multiply the natural logarithm of a 3n because we have a 3, excuse me, 3, 3 spaces. The 3 spaces are the spaces of, uh, of molecules of uh, the coherent domain. The spacing of the uh, uh, molecule, external incoherent molecule, uh, external molecules belonging to incoherent fraction, that, uh, all that has to be considered for the phase of the placements and has to be considered as a third spacey with respect to momentum. We can consider that also momentum can be in the can be uh, represented with the number the same number of a position. In this hypothesis we got this uh, result. So if we consider the configuration of the uh, yeah, of the captured after the capture, we get that the entropy becomes the same entropy, initial entropy, minus three times the Boltzmann constant multiplied the natural logarithm of three. While when well, the uh, coherent domain release uh, the uh, molecule, the molecule escape the coherent domain under the signal of uh, ion, ion cyclotron resonance, when the, the molecule escape, we have that the entropy increases 
of the same uh, quantity. So we can see what happens when uh, before and after the capture of uh, the molecule by means of a coin domains that the entropy decreases when uh, the coin domain release the molecule the entropy increases excuse me and uh, we can consider also the entropy after the entire novikov shadin experiment. So we have before the entropy of the solution before the experiment. That is uh, this one. Then we have the capture and then we have the release of the molecules under the ion cyclotron resonance. And we can see that it is almost zero. The same we can get with another model where we consider the, per the permutations instead of the combinations. And we have the same result, obviously, when n, the number of all the kind of molecules considered is very high as it is really again we get uh, that the result is yeah that uh, before and after the novikov jardin experiment the entropy uh, is uh, almost zero. The entropy variation is almost zero. So the novikov jardin experiment is like a adiabatic reaction, also in an open system. But uh, it is surprising. Hmm? because uh, uh, the coherent domains, when capture uh, a molecule, in decrease their entropy. The entropy of the system, no, not only the entropy. And when they release, increase the entropy, but of the same quantity, quantity that uh, they uh, uh, the, of the same quantity that they decreased when uh, captured molecules. So we can say that uh, when a solving a soluble molecules. Uh, In equals solution, a soluble for soluble, I mean molecules that satisfy the condition to have the same frequency of the water in a peak of phonon, phonon uh, oscillation of the peak of electron oscillation. When uh, you solve soluble, soluble molecules in the, in the meaning I said, in equals solution, entropy increases. But when the molecules are captured by a CD in the coherent fraction, entropy decreases. So we can say that at the lab pressure and temperature and the in an electrolytic cell, where the volume of the solution doesn't change, the free energy that is related to the 
entropy by this relation because the volume is not changing, then the energy of Gibbs, the free energy, after the solution, excuse me, is, uh, see, yes, is uh, minus than zero. While when uh, we have the capture of the molecule by a coherent domain, you have uh, a variation of uh, the energy greater than zero. The, the Gibbs energy increases. This is the fact. No? Because if you have a variation of entropy, excuse me, ecco. If you have a variation of entropy, negative variation of entropy, multiplied for minus, you have a, an addendum uh, positive. So the Gibbs energy increases in that case. So we have to provide an energy when uh, we solve a molecule in aqueous solution. For instance, uh, we can turn the teaspoon into the coffee cup. But uh, in the coherent water, a fraction of provided energy is stored in a mixed coherent domains somewhere. How coherent domains store uh, energy? They have uh, a cloud of uh, quasi-free electrons due to difference of uh, the ground state and the first excited state of the water molecules. The difference in, elect in electron volt is 12.06 electron volt. The ionization is 12.60 electron volt. There is a difference of half electron volt. So these electrons are the electrons that are in the excited state. Uh, are quasi free, as in a conductor. They form chiral currents around the coherent domain. An image that we can use is a, a flock of birds that are forming their graves in the in the sky. Recently, Nature public, published a, a paper um, stating that it discovered a new stage of matter, a stage where there are chiral, co chiral currents around. Uh, the system in, on the surface of the system. And it is the case of uh, uh, electrons in uh, coherent domains. So the energy that is captured by coherent domains is stored in the, in the angular momentum of uh, the system of quasi free electrons. And the uh, Coherent domains are able to release this energy in the form of extremely low frequency, ion cyclotron frequency, when they uh, create an ion current in the, in the incoherent fraction of water. That are the, the ion currents 
that are able to induce chemical transformation in the cell. The reason for which Robert Adaya denied the existence of the lipoprotein effect before of the goodness of the studies of Blackman is that he was um, do not want accept the idea that uh, uh, that uh, electrical buildings um, elect uh, power lines high voltage power lines can cause cancer leukemia in uh, childhood leukemia that was uh, 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 hypothesized by the International Agency for Research of Cancer in Lyon, which in 2001 stated that the uh, magnetic field coming from high voltage power line is a possible carcinogen agent for childhood leukemia. So, he denied that uh, uh, the Novikovic-Jadin effect could be real, but also Libov effect. But uh, on the contrary, uh, these effects are real, and uh, there is a, I think, solid uh, theoretical background under uh, this effect. Uh, it is uh, the explanation uh, of the formation of the almost free electrons clouds. Uh, we have to notice that only the 13% is act of uh, all molecules, water molecules forming the coherent domains are actually in the excited state stage, while the 87% is in the ground state. But uh, it means that we have uh, about uh, 60 million of electrons in a coherent domain that are quasi-free, almost free. And they are the way to store energy. In another uh, paper we published in 2015, with the Libov also and the Montagnier, that uh, were co authors, uh, we proved that uh, uh, water is able to store energy over any form thermal, sound, vibration, electromagnetic. And it is able to store, according to the, our theory, thanks to the clouds of quasi-free electrons, of coherent domains. So, uh, the fourth phase of the vicov jardin experiment can be recalled in this way. We have uh, uh, molecules that are ions, excuse me, that are, this is the, the, the bulk of water between two electrodes. This is the equivalent domains. When you apply the ion cyclotron resonance, a current of ions escape. Uh, they are the ions tuned with the ion cyclotron resonance. So if you apply ion cyclotron resonance or calcium, they are atoms of uh, ions of calcium that form the peak of the, the Jardin peak we saw before. So these uh, ions are going at toward the electrode. 
But the energy of the ions is not the energy provided with the ion cyclotron resonance. It recalls a train running with the, the door open. The solute molecule, calcium in the, in the example I did, is like a voyager who can get on or off the train under the influence of the ponderomotive attraction or under the lipov zadin effect, respectively. He gets off, the Voyager gets off the, the train, uh, with the kinetic energy of the train, not only with the energy of the push uh, that uh, can be applied. Here, the, the push applied is the ion cycle of resonance, but it is uh, almost not relevant compared to the energy provided by the coherent domain. Like, it is not relevant in the case of the fall of the voyage outside of the train, it is not relevant a possible push that was applied to him. Uh, the ion motion is along an arc, an arc, because uh, uh, it is generated by the ion cycle of resonance. So ions in the presence of the geomagnetic of one static magnetic field <coughs> moving has to move along an orbit, a ion cyclotron orbit. And in this case, it is possible to add a system to recognize in the bulk of water, to recognize the chemical space that is forming the current because the, uh, the chemical space is the one that the only one that is able to have the curvature, the curvature of the orbit, ion cyclotron orbit of this space. If it is calcium, uh, the ions uh, uh, escaping from coherent domains under the stimulation of the ion cyclotron resonance are forming uh, an arch of the orbit of the calcium ion cyclotron resonance orbit. And only calcium is able to do it. So we can uh, suppose according to the evolution, that in our cells, when it happens, we are able, our cells are able, after 100,000 years of uh, evolution, to recognize there will be systems in the cell able to recognize calcium and uh, receptors of calcium become able to re to to capture to react with these uh, effectors because uh, it is uh, the answer to another paradox of uh, uh, Prigogine. Prigogine said, but how it is, po is it possible that in a cell that uh, can have uh, a diameter of uh, one, two, me two meter, 
reaction, chemical reactions happen. Maybe the effect of the molecule, the effect of the molecule is uh, far from the receptor molecule. Maybe they can be at the opposite side of the of the diameter of the cell. In the case, two micron is a very long distance for objects that uh, whose side is uh, to angstrom, as in the case of water molecule. Two micron is a very long distance. Which is the strength able to cause the chemical reaction in that case? It cannot be the chemical potential because the chemical potential is almost blind. It is able to see up to few angstroms. So reaction could happen only when the effect on the, and the receptor are very close, are close in the order of two, three, few angstrom. But the reaction can occur also when molecules are far one from the other. But we can think that there is a strength, a long range strength able to do it. The only uh, long range strength we have is the electromagnetic one. But it is not enough because uh, there are many, many currents as uh, Robert Adair observed in the cell. And uh, if a, a current arises, there are many other there are able to dis destroy this current. And the Brownian strength is uh, 10 to 7 times higher than the Lorentz force applied by the ion cyclotron resonance in the Novikov Jardinet effect. How, the, how it is possible. We have to consider that not only ions escape coherent domains with the energy of coherent domains, but they keep their information, the information of being calcium or magnesium or uh, glutamic acid because they escape uh, following an arch of orbit, of a cyclotron orbit. So we can state that the water is an ecotropic engine, not only able to provide energy in uh, uh, with the reduction of uh, we can say in an adiabatic way, because the reduction of uh, entropy that we get when the coherent domain captures ions is, uh, is uh, balanced by the uh, required energy to provide, to form ion currents when ions escape the coherent domains. But it is also able to provide information, to release information in the form of a charged mass, uh, which uh, follow the cyclotron motion. Uh, um, in a keep with uh, with. Uh, at the National 
Council of Research, Italian National Council of Research in Rome. Uh, when uh, also Mikhail Jardin went to visit us, we performed some experiment, not in 2000, in 2008, but in, two, in 2008, observing that the lib of Jardin effect arises in a vessel without sunk electrodes as well. The only condition that there is an external, uh, external to the vessel, external electric field. There is a, an electric field. Oh. This observation is a, seems to be crucial to explain ion currents in cytoplasm which is surrounded by cell membrane, which can be approximated by a spherical condenser surface. So, uh, we know that electric fields are so, uh, at so low frequencies to be considered like uh, static electric fields, cannot penetrate the cell because the cell, the membrane is a different of voltage and is uh, acting as uh, a condenser. But the magnetic field has not this uh, constraint. It can pass through the cell membrane. Oh, we got also, I don't know see if we can get uh, this uh, representation because the film, the movie, sometimes does not work and we are working now connected with Japan. So we can, no, this, I can try again. No, oh, it is not uh, working. But uh, this is a short movie that you can find also in a in a transmission in the podcast of a transmission in Italy. I can provide the link uh, because uh, it was published by a network uh, some in two thousand twelve. Uh, here we have uh, um, the inner of a cytoplasm of a lymphocyte. And uh, we, uh, it is marked with, uh, with uh, a marker, red marker for calcium. Uh, there are organelles uh, where that are full of calcium molecules, and so they are stronger. It is not working, but when we start the movie, that is when we do the switch off, the switch on, excuse me, the switch on of ion cyclical resonance of calcium, the organelles becomes less red and the background becomes more red because the calcium escape from organelles from a mitochondria too that are store of calcium and diffuse in the cytoplasm. It is a proof that uh, the ion cyclone resonance is not only a chemical, physical chemical uh, experiment uh, effect, but it is an effect that is acting in, uh, in cells. Many thanks to my colleagues and collaborators. Thank you so much.
for this uh, for your attention. Thank you, Professor Giuliani. This is really the... <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> I hope you can see the applause. Uh, for my part, I just wanted to say that this was the first time that I really saw such a beautiful flow of most basic explanation how coherent domains are, you know, uh, formed, why they are formed, then uh, what the, the re this resonance is up to the uh, entropy and <clears throat> how it is related to information. So this was really a beautiful flow. For me, it was very, very explanatory. Thank you. So um, <laughs> now let's uh, give a few moments to Professor Giuliani to catch his breath. I would like to uh, say <clears throat> we have uh, around half an hour or something like that for discussion. You can post questions in the chat box or you can raise hands. So then I, I, I will um, ask you to, to just um, um, go, go live with the question. Uh, and I need to, um, I have to say uh, from on our part, uh, from our um, organization part, I apologize. Um, there, there is something wrong with the transcription to Japanese because the Zoom does not recognize as well uh, the language. And unfortunately, due to this, maybe people who are from Japan did not have appropriate translation. So I'm very sorry. Professor Giuliani, you already have so many compliments in the chat. We are open for que for questions. If somebody has something that uh, that they would like to comment on or ask, please raise hands. Say in the chat in the chat. Maravilloso from Tiziana Vini. <laughs> Maravilloso. I agree. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, do I see any raised hands? Do I see any raised hands? No. Okay, well, I don't want to be the first because I I feel I'm selfish then. Uh, Professor Tenko, would you like maybe to, to, to comment something or ask? Well, I, I, uh, I wanted to, first of all, um, thank you, Livio, for this comprehensive, absolutely, uh, presentation of um, coherence as a topic, something that, that we have been interested for so, and of course, um, unresolved for many people and, and for us also. Um, well, finally, I'm, I'm happy that we started this year with, with, with your, your talk and your webinar, because this is something that um, stays in front of Akupotomics and we want to um, work closely with um, uh, theory of um, quantum fields, um, theory and, and coherence. So we, we need to understand every each detail and and your your talk helped a lot, so we'll be back to this talk for many times I think and and um, people following up of atomics need to and I think we we need more people going deeply in, into this um, in order to connect the the results that we have um, and here is one of of uh, my questions. Um, I've been listening to you and um, looking at um, spectra in infrared. Uh, I think special attention deserves um, explanation, understanding of um, relation between coherence and um, overtones, the nonlinearity um, that we have in the in the overtone spectroscopy. What we see in infrared um, is a part of what we see in infrared. It's much more um, richness of, um, of information, I think, in infrared. And um, when I was looking at, um, you were talking about infrared, um, 
the the two peaks that you focused on for um, pure water of the bulk water and um, coherent, um, we have a one small peak. Um, to me, so I, I want to go back together with you back to these three peaks. Um, actually, the the line that um, is between the two the two peaks uh, is highly temperature dependent. Yes, uh, they are temperature dependent. Yes, you would say this a uh, this a uh, graph. Yes, yes, absolutely, graph. exactly. Yes, yes, um, it is a dependent. We have another graph where I show the yeah. uh, here mm -hmm. that is dependent of the temperature. Yes, the peak are. Uh, almost uh, two thirds uh, when uh, you pass from zero to 80 centigrade mm -hmm. in the in the normal water the same in the in the heavy water so it is depending of temperature yeah so hot yes. extension this the 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 peak, the half uh, both the extension in the frequency and the amplitude. Yes. Okay. Um, yes, in this part of the spectrum, we cannot see isospecific point. We, when we go to uh, um, higher frequency, so basic, short, uh, short the wavelength. No, 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 the same spectrum, the same, the same figure. Um, yes, yes, yes the sa same one. This one? Yeah. Or oh, even, even the previous one that you showed. Uh, the previous. The de deuterium. Deuterium. Ah, and, deuterium. And, yes, and then hydrogen. Yes, this one. So uh, I guess I don't see here the the. X, the um, the x axis, but I guess this is uh, wave numbers. And, and when you go to the left, then you could see this isosbestic point, and I think this is where we, we go already to, to the overtones. Um, yes, 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 exactly. Yeah. Um, but if, if we go closer, then we realize that actually, um, the when you the previous figure that you showed with the uh, bulk water. And the other one, uh, um, they they will change in in height, um, definitely, with the temperature. Um, so I, it I think we we are still not a, a bit a bit far in far away in understanding. Um, following your talk, to, to me became clear that, okay, bulk water, why why we say bulk? Because we have a mixed CD, right? Yes. The mixed coherent domain. Okay, then then going to to um, longer wavelengths and lower frequency, um, then we have um, a crystal, let's say, uh, coherent domains. What we don't understand is this small peak that is in the beginning uh, before the bulk water. So if you if you could go back to this um, uh, the spectrum, the 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 main absorbance in infrared. There's another another graph you have. And you I, say it is the one. This um, one more. Excuse me. Maybe yeah. The, yeah yes. This one. Yes. yes, yes. One. You see this small thing here. On the left, mm -hmm. to the left. What, what is that? Oh, this is uh, the... We have uh, three peaks yes, from yes, the yes. deconvolution of the peak of absorption, about uh, three, three, uh, 3,000 uh, yes. centimeters minus one. One peak is... Uh, uh, Excuse me. 
One peak is the coherent one. Yes, yes. One the totally incoherent and one the mixed uh, fraction where we are, we have uh, coherent domains that are dissolving and we have uh, uh, coherent domains that are uh, increasing, uh, enhancing uh, their that are that are forming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what's interesting that following um, the Vitello um, the proposal to um, identify coherence, when you find the um, high high correlation between log of the temperature, for example, yes. and optical yeah. density, um, we we found uh, following our infrared spectra that the only non-coherent uh, part of the spectra for, for pure water is around this 3,000 um, translated in overtones. In, in overtone. it, it, it will be about 1441, 14.2, uh, 14, nanometers, which is the absorbance bands of the water dimer. <clears throat> So this, this is what we have at the moment, um, that this part is not coherent, but then um, if, um, and, and the, on the other side, we have um, um, a Sekalize group working for so, so, so long time on dimers, saying that uh, in the dimers, is the, the water dimer is a structure that shows tunneling effect. and. Um, most probably that we could have at that particular point uh, swapping energy from from environment so that that should be non absolutely non coherent um, um, but there, but... there are other approaches uh, the one uh, of uh, uh, that uh, correlates uh, coherence with the fractal behavior uh, that is a typical approach of that uh, Bitello proposed introduced. Yes, uh, and uh, and also the study of uh, isosbestic uh, point uh, that uh, was an approach introduced by Antonella de Nino uh, provide some um, important information about this, but uh, the. Um, it is not so easy to to investigate coherence, and uh, I think that uh, the Novikov Jadine experiment is uh, a key, an experimental key to yes. investigate this uh, coherence. But there are other ways, obviously, and I think that uh, your approach uh, could be. Is uh, well funded because because they introduce uh, a the the powerful tool of uh, uh, infrared spectroscopy near infrared spectroscopy uh, that could be used, uh, I think, also for diagnostic uh, purposes, translating. Uh, the matter from uh, physical chemistry to uh, chemical biology. Uh, very important uh, to detect uh, uh, diseases. Uh, I saw in your presentation some years ago that uh, you are able to measure the quantity of uh, Zuntel cations or uh, other main import, very important species. Uh, Zuntel cations is uh, related to the uh, to the possibility to transmit the signals because uh, uh, when there is uh, the the noise, so high noise in a cell, due to the thousand of chemical species that are moving, 
in the case uh, we need to understand the signals that are um, and, uh, that are in the cell to reduce the noise and uh, for example in the the holistic practitioners use uh, uh, the dilution to reduce the noise but then you need mm. to enhance the signal and it is possible providing uh, uh, increasing the conductivity of water and the mm -hmm. conductivity of water can be increased by uh, the protonation that uh, the the jardin effect uh, shows you can you can get by ion cyclotron resonance so uh, not only we have to uh, apply the proper ion cyclotron resonance to move some uh, ion or Zwitter ion within the cell. We need also increase the conductivity. And it is possible thanks to the fact that Zundel cation, uh, we can uh, extract Zundel cation from coherent domains applying the ion cyclotron resonance of Zundel cations. But the ion cyclotron resonance of Zundel cations is at our latitudes, the Schumann peak frequency. Mm, that's very interesting, yes. And so uh, that is the natural frame within the events up. And we have a static geomagnetic field with a, a geomagnetic inclination that is very important because uh, when the a geomagnetic uh, field increase uh, going toward the North Pole or the South Pole, the inclination decreases. So the parallel uh, Schumann, the parallel uh, field uh, of uh, Schumann frequencies that are surface waves going uh, uh, surface waves. To get the parallelism between Schumann frequencies and the geomagnetic field, you have to consider the component of the cosine of the angle of the inclination, magnetic inclination. It provides a stability of the effect in the in a large side of the uh, of the earth because when the geomagnetic field increases you have uh, about a 60 uh, a 60 micro tesla in, in the area of uh, of uh, nikolai mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in uh, rome we have uh, about 45 micro tesla but it changes the inclination and the result is the same, almost the same. So uh, it is uh, uh, important to provide uh, protonation because uh, uh, when you extract only H three O plus Zundel cation. Uh, but not the anion uh, OH minus uh, to that uh, you could uh, have in electroly in electrolysis. In this case, uh, you need to to increase the conductivity. You need to extract only H three O plus, and it is possible thanks to the ion cyclotron resonance or to Schumann frequency. Thank you.
Thank, Thank you, you. Giuliani. We have one question. Um, Nikolai Blom, can you? <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Hi, everyone. Hi, Livio. Hi. It's so good to, to see you and hear you and uh, many of my other water friends. So wonderful. I have a more philosophical question for you, Livio. And what I understood from your talk was that you said that uh, black man published a paper where he, I don't know if he censored himself or he was censored, but he was not allowed to use the term ion cycloton resonance. So is there, why do you think there is, that there seems to be some kind of resistance in the scientific community uh, towards this explanation of, of how biology works and, and the biphasic nature of water? Um, why is that, and and what 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 can we do to to overcome this this barrier? Because I, it seems to be the the next step in understanding uh, biology and life. Uh, so, do you have any comments on that? How how can we overcome this barrier? Or that, of course, everybody can watch your webinar and and read your papers. But is is there a fundamental barrier? towards this, this understanding. Hey, thank you. Um, one time, once, I met uh, uh, Eric Boa. You introduced to me Eric Boa. Uh, so, to his name is uh, related the one uh, of the more divisional question of the physics. The interpretation of, uh, of the quantum theory. Uh, we know that uh, there is the Copenhagen School that provided an interpretation. Another interpretation that was related to the not local, uh, not locality of, uh, of uh, events is related to Boom, David Boom. <laughs> the first uh, interpretation, the Copenhagen School, was uh, enhanced, was uh, uh, extremized by Feynman, who uh, reached the conclusion that uh, before the observation, there is no reality, the irrealistic interpretation of the event. For the existence of coherence domain, we need a realistic interpretation. We have to state that before the observation, there is something. Not that there does not exist something like in the interpretation of Feynman. Feynman is stating that uh, there is no event before the observation. He resolves the shredding uh, problem of the cat stating that cat does not exist before the observation, they open, before you open the, the box. Uh, but we state that uh, before the observation, in the time of the indetermination principle that the Blackman, the Blackman, Feynman refuses, Feynman states that the indetermination, the indetermination principle is due to a bad mathematics that was used to describe uh, quantum physics before he introduced his arrow average method. But we need to think that the indetermination principle 
describe a realistic situation. We have the indetermination principle in the in the form delta e multiplied the delta t is uh, greater than h uh, uh, divided by four p Greek. That delta t is the reason for the existence of coherent domains. Because we think that uh, uh, you can have, thanks to the indetermination principle, we can have uh, a delta E, so a spike of energy, maybe an infrared ray, a ray or another uh, gamma ray or uh, a radio frequency, maybe many kind of, of energy. For a delta T time is short time. So the ray uh, appears and then disappears after a delta T time. But what happens when the ray appears in a condensed matter with a higher density, like a liquid? If we consider an infrared wave, it interacts not with one molecule of water, in the condensed matter, but in the same time, with the sum with the, so many water, uh, water molecules, how to be uh, how many uh, you can uh, the infrared ray can uh, touch at the same time? If you do the computation, we get that. Uh, they can be 10,000, Depen it depends on the region of the infrared. And uh, in this interaction, the coherent domains begins to, to, to bear, to, to form, to be formed. Uh, because uh, when the ray interacts with the condensed matter, it cannot be back to the vacuum from which it was coming. Furthermore, by contact of uh, with the many, many uh, water molecules that are increasing by the effect of the ponderomotive force, the, the initial nucleus of uh, coherent domains is growing up thanks to the ponderomotive force. And the infrared ray losses uh, energy due to the shot with the molecules. Losses rays and the is the frequency oscillation becomes lower than H knee, where knee is the, the frequency of a propagation. So the infrared uh, ray cannot be propagated and is uh, trapped in the coherent domain. And it uh, allows other molecules comes to form the coherent domains. And the coherent domains is growing only uh, until the Brownian force of the other condensed matter of the bulk of water are 
destroying the coherent domain. Only at the time the infrared ray can go back to the vacuum. So, for us, it is a very important the realistic interpretation of nature, the realistic interpretation based on the interpretation of David Byrne uh, of uh, quantum physics, not to the not to the one of uh, Feynman, that is uh, an exaggeration, uh, an amplification of the Copenhagen School interpretation. Obviously, coherent domains are created not only from infrared cam rays coming from vacuum, also from infrared coming from sun. It is also observed by uh, the professor of uh, Washington University, who was uh, who is studying exclusions on water. He observed that, that if you apply infrared uh, light, the surface, the, the zone of uh, surface uh, superficial water increases. Yeah, obviously, because uh, infrared ray are the uh, radiation able to create coherent domains. I hope to have uh, answer to your question. He seems satisfied. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you, Olivia. Um, we are running out of time, but I would like to ask at least one question uh, from the questions that uh, Pierre uh, actually uh, has written in the in the chat box. So one of them is about uh, DNA. Uh, so he says the DNA can be regarded as a helical resonator susceptible to electromagnetic field. Can we envision that the surrounding uh, coherent domains acting as a hydroskeleton become dislodged from the DNA, uh, initiates uncontrolled transcription? We know that dehydrated DNA dis disintegrates immediately, there's only bulk water is left. Is this the mechanism that induces transcription? I think this is a very interesting question, so if you can maybe... Comment uh, um, it is a statement more, oh. more than a question. I think that is a suggestive, a, a very important question. Uh, really, um, the, we had uh, the contribution of Martin Blank and uh, Reba Goodman on this point. These uh, two physicists of the biophysicists of the Columbia University about 2011, published the paper uh, titled uh, DNA as a fractal antenna in electromagnetic fields. And they observed that the DNA is uh, transmitting signals. Uh, it is possible because uh, I I asked to Martin Blank in uh, I remember we uh, we were, were in a in a meeting uh, at, the, at the University of Sul in Brazil. I asked in that occasion if he had the proof that to transmit was DNA or not the water surrounding DNA. He said that he had not considered to investigate uh, the, the equation. So we don't know at this moment. But 
the idea of Pierre, uh, maybe is in the same direction of my question at time. Uh, maybe that the water, coherent water domains that is the surrounding DNA has the role to transmit and to receive signals. Also transcriptional signals, obviously. Mm, thank you. Um, so is are there any more uh, short questions or comments? Let's say one or two, maybe we can have. I just want to make a comment uh, and leave you thanks to your talk today. I think I found the answer um, of something that we have been observing. Um, when you when we uh, identify the specific water absorbance band, very often we see that people have identified this this bands or closed bands to proteins or some other molecules. So if if I have a number of a frequency that we see in our um, spectrum with high variations, and I try to identify this band, and I go back to different, uh, numerous papers that have ident identified this, I found different assignments. And I think you answer my questions tonight with this with this with your talk. Uh, I didn't, I've never thought about this, um, that actually the molecules that are close to the frequency, the water frequency, are swapped in the coherent domain. It is natural then, naturally, to see, to find um, overlapping or close uh, frequency of water and other molecules, which makes me very, very satisfied. <laughs> Uh, comfortable at this moment. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah. I would actually Thank like you, to Anna, follow you. that. Ah, I was also, I was um, also similar like Professor Zenkova. Uh, when you when you showed this um, uh, spectrum of, of water and uh, you showed so um, how these are the two broadest uh, widest uh, largest peak and how they cover everything usually in spectroscopy people are saying like oh it covers everything it hides everything but then exactly what professor said son, it's not covering it's just it it um, um it takes everything in so that is why we see this huge that is why we cannot see this individual bands corresponding to single protein molecules or something it is not we are actually constantly looking at water exactly water so this was for me very um, you know, um, um, I felt uh, surprised pleasantly, and that was uh, maybe like a major point during your presentation that I could relate to what we are seeing. But uh, 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 sorry, Elena. At the same time, I, I think a, a future, very important direction that we have to work out is to understand um, the no the overtone spectroscopy. Um, Yes, and, exactly. and and we have to explore um, in relation to coherence because what you Livy just said, um, light at different frequencies um, absorb is a, gets absorbed by the water, and we can see how it changes the structure of the water. Now we've developed an instrument and we're using it in our lab, um, and we're going to use lasers, tunable lasers also, to see how each of, of um, energy, a coherent light, will restructure the water. And that will be an, a window that we, we will probably more and more understand what is happening in the water in terms of um, distorting the coherence and yeah, I absolutely agree. We are not talking about single water molecules. We're talking about uh, a group of molecules that because they're constantly in and out, in and out. But the, the average, the, the, the status of, of each coherent domain and what you said, uh, different different clusters. Yes, we have uh, different uh, uh, water mole molecular conformations 
We have identified those. We don't. We know exactly the frequencies that they are vibrating with, and uh, we can um, identify. We can monitor um, in real time exactly what 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 you were talking about, Feynman, and uh, all these problems with with quantum mechanics. I think um, it are coming from the. the all this discussion about observations, which is absolutely the 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 real the real things are happening when light at specific frequency interacts with the matter, and then being able to measure and follow and monitor because it is it is a process, it is a development. I think um, give, will give us lots of potential and and a wide venue to to. Um, to search for for uh, understanding of biological systems because all about biological system is water and how water interacts with the, the rest i think and and um, and you help uh, us a lot with, with your talk and in the future so we'll have to continue we would like to continue discussing this yes very very peaceful well, I'm also very, very grateful for the talk today. Um, I don't think I ever saw uh, this beautifully presented, the flow of information from what coherent domain is to the information. So this was very revelatory for me. I think also the audience um, enjoyed. Uh, we had a full um, number of aud in audience for like more than one and a half hour. Only now Japanese people are leaving because it's a little bit late for, for Japan. So with this, if there are no more short questions or comments, I would like to, to say thank you again to Professor Giuliani for giving us this pleasure of speaking uh, for free uh, for one and a, more than one and a half hours and talking and uh, answering our questions. So uh, really sincere applause and thank you once again to the audience. We will have this recording. Um, you will receive the link for the YouTube uh, channel uh, video in a few days. And Professor Giuliani, um, agreed to share his presentation also. So we will upload together with that link um, the PDF of his presentation so you can go over. Of course, if you have any more questions regarding Professor Giuliani's talk, you can uh, write to us, you can comment on YouTube channel, you can also um, contact him and we can all uh, actually build on this talk further on in future. And I hope we will together learn learn more about what what the life is because i think this is what uh, actually gathers all of us together we would really really like to understand better what the life is what we are how do we function what why do i think what i think it's just really i guess we're so curious about what we are as human beings why are we here and so on and these are all the questions that, that uh, i think research such as professor giuliani can lead us to, to answers. So, Professor Giuliani, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. Many, many thanks to you, to Rumiana, to Aqua Photonic Society, and to all the members of the society. Thank you. You have also many, many uh, thanks from, from the audience in the chat box. And I don't know if you you saw uh, speakers put a lot of hearts and, and applauses on Zoom. So with this, we are going to end today's webinar and see you in uh, next month, in March approximately. Until then, you can uh, revisit Professor Giuliani's lecture on YouTube in a few days and then See you in March with another interesting topic about water, this time about water bridge. <laughs> Thank you Thank all you. for attending today. Thank it you. was really, really lovely to see you all after uh, like two or three months break. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. you, Livia. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye bye, Europe. Bye. Enjoy your day. <laughs> Good you. night, Japan. Bye. Otsukare sama desu. <laughs> Enjoy Otsukare night. Sama desu. Have a good evening. Have a great day. Have a good bye evening. Bye bye. 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 Bye bye.
Ciao, Olivia. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Thank you. Massimo. Thank you, Olivia. Grazie. Ciao. Ciao, Nicolai. Ciao, Vignano. Grazie. Grazie a voi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, we have to we have to think, Leo, how we can continue this because I really, really like, and I, I feel like we definitely have to. Uh, because I, I remember uh, talking to uh, Del Judice, Lady Del Judice, uh, about light, and when I I started talking to him and Antonio, it was quite early, I think. So I was not so much aware of what, what we can, um, what we exactly see then, but gradually, gradually, I think we are more and more, and what Pierre, Pierre just, um, he wrote that probably we need a new, te not new theory, but quantum field theory is a very good, uh, a basic um, to, to start and develop uh, the exact thing that, that we, uh, we have to know about life. So you 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 really Excuse made me. a yep. Excuse me, I have uh, someone who is calling. Okay, okay, okay. See you then. I, I'll get in touch with you. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you to you bye very bye. very Thank much. You. Yeah. I hope that. Uh, a webinar on uh, on the water floating bridge. Mm -hmm. Next next month. Yeah. Next month. Yes. Uh, you know that uh, we uh, discovered that the the floating bridges, water floating bridges, are able to transport the ions. We discovered mm -hmm. it in two thousand nine. I see. Uh, after Elmar Fuchs. Uh, in 2016 or 17, I don't remember, mm -hmm. in Sofia, reclaiming the, the discovery, but the discovery is uh, well uh, stated and Before. published in 2009. I and see. then 2015. And uh, I think that uh, we we did a further um, discovery uh, suggested by Vojekov, Vladimir, Vladimir mm -hmm. Vojekov. He said, uh, can you try uh, to observe that there is, uh, uh, that um, floating bridge can uh, arise within the same baker of water? Mm -hmm. uh, we observe this thanks to the transport of ions, because mm -hmm. we found the dust of uh, copper, uh, because we use uh, two electrodes, uh, one the the made of copper, because uh, um, uh, copper can um, release the dust of copper mm -hmm. in, the, in the solution. Uh, you need uh, a a very pure water, um, millipore water, to to get that uh, the bridge arises mm -hmm. but uh, then when it is uh, uh, established you can uh, uh, can uh, send uh, elements atoms thanks to the fact that the electrodes releases these atoms mm -hmm. and in this way we could uh, observe the uh, bridge within the same uh, water that you can mm -hmm. observe by uh, by eyes, but we found that uh, copper was on the platinum electrodes. Mm. Uh, the platinum Interesting. Electrodes. Yes. And so, and we formulated the, the hypothesis between us, um, Emilio, me. Uh, the idea was uh, from uh, Vladimir Boyekov. We hypothesized that when the reaction occurs in the cell, they occur, they occur because a water bridge is established to transport the ion current. Mm -hmm. 
not only there are the ion currents like we observed with the novikov Vivadin experiment, but the ion currents can, can uh, exist, can move, thanks to the water bridge that transport ions. And the water bridge uh, is established only for a few seconds, the time, a few, so maybe minutes, and the concentration that is transferred is in the same order of, um, of uh, uh, Magnitude. Concentration that you find in the cell. Yeah, it's interesting. Did you find the copper? Um, oh, you you found copper on the platinum electrode, but did you find found did you find platinum? Yes, yes, yes. On, yes. on the copper electrode. Yes, yes. <laughs> the, the, the water bridge is able to transfer cations from lower voltage towards higher voltage and very higher because it is in the order of 20 kilovolt. So but this is amazing. I mean, and it, it, it's all about circulation. I mean, it is not one way, it just, it's all yeah, circulation. In the other way, you have uh, a soliton. We suppose that, that in the other way to transport uh, is uh, there is a soliton that is uh, going in the other way, in the opposite way. In, in fact, indeed, we wrote a second paper in 2015 with uh, the aid, the help of Larissa Brigic. Ah, is, yes. Uh, that is a scholar of uh, Davidovi. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes. I will be interested to follow the webinar, next webinar. Wonderful, wonderful. Then, if Again. not earlier, see you next one. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao.